Amid the rise of Japanese manufacturers dominating the American market with their powerful motorcycles, the bigger is better culture in America thrived. Large capacity motorcycles were seen as superior and prestigious. Take, for instance, the Honda CBX 1000 with its inline six engine, featuring a 1047 cubic centimeter, double overhead camshaft 24 valve, air cooled engine capable of producing 105 horsepower at 9,000 revolutions per minute. But the Italians didn't just stand by. Benelli Sei, with its inline six, 747 cubic centimeter SOHC engine and three Delorto 24 millimeter carburetors produced 76 horsepower at 9,000 revolutions per minute and had a top speed of about 120 miles per hour, showing that local Italian brands were still in the game. It was during this era, in 1978, that the Italian motorcycle manufacturer based in Braganz aimed to make a bold statement in technological innovation with its V6 engine attempting to compete with other superbikes. Enter the Laverda V6, a machine hailed as potentially the best endurance racing motorcycle of its time. But did the vision of Massimo Laverda and Giulio Alfieri bring success, or did it lead to a different fate? Let's rewind to the 1970s and unravel this compelling story. The Laverda Company was founded in 1873 by Pietro Laverda, initially focusing on agricultural equipment. Over time, the business shifted toward producing motorcycles with small capacity engines under 200 cc. This transformation was driven by Francesco Laverda, who envisioned creating affordable transportation tailored to the needs of the Italian population recovering from World War II. Following success in the domestic market, Laverda set its sights on developing larger capacity motorcycles to break into international markets, especially in Europe and America. In 1959, Massimo Laverda, Francesco's son and a passionate motorcyclist, took a trip to the United States to study the motorcycle market firsthand. He discovered that American consumers were enamored with large capacity motorcycles, particularly V-twins with loud thundering engines. These bikes symbolized freedom and power, perfectly aligning with the bigger's better mantra of the era. This trip provided Massimo with invaluable insights and inspiration for Laverda's future developments. Upon returning from America, Massimo persuaded his father, Francesco, to produce larger capacity motorcycles if they wanted to expand into the American and European markets. In 1966, they unveiled their first prototype a 650cc twin-engine motorcycle. Designed by Luciano Zen, the engine borrowed inspiration from the Honda CB77, with additional design elements drawn from the Norton 650SS and BMW R69S. Reliable Bosch electrics were incorporated, alongside a spine frame and Cariani suspension, which ensured superior handling. This prototype was first showcased at the Earl's Court Show in London in November 1966. By 1967, Jack McCormick, an American motorcycle marketer, visited the Laverda factory and suggested that the American market would prefer a 750cc motorcycle. This feedback led to the production of the Laverda 750, which debuted the following year and laid the groundwork for successful models like the 750 GT, 750 Sport, and 750 SFC. For the American market, these motorcycles were marketed under the brand American Eagle, thanks to a collaboration with McCormick, quickly capturing international attention with their reliability and endurance reputation. The 1970s marked the rise of superbikes in America, with Japanese manufacturers quickly responding by introducing 750 CC four-cylinder models. To keep up with this trend, Laverda developed its 750cc twin engine into a 1,000cc triple in 1972. However, as the years went by, Laverda began to fall behind amidst the innovation blitz of Japanese manufacturers. Still, Laverda was not a company to give up easily. In 1977, the company launched an ambitious project to develop a motorcycle powered by a 1,000cc V6 engine. This project was spearheaded by Massimo Laverda, in collaboration with Giulio Alfieri, 
a renowned automotive engineer celebrated for his contributions to Maserati. The engine featured a 90-degree V6 configuration, a 996 cubic centimeter capacity, DOHC operated by chains, four valves per cylinder, and liquid cooling. It also incorporated a five-speed transmission and a shaft drive system. Designed for high performance, this V6 engine was capable of reaching an impressive top speed of 285 kilometers per hour, 177 miles per hour. Yet the project faced significant challenges, including the bike's considerable size and weight and technical issues with the suspension and transmission. Despite this, the V6 made its debut at the 1978 Bull Door, though it failed to complete the race due to technical difficulties. Spectators at the Bull Door were mesmerized by the distinctive roar and power of the Lavrida V6 1000cc, leaving them in awe of its visual and acoustic presence. Few could imagine a machine like this ever being mass-produced for road use, given its advanced and ambitious specifications for the time. However, during the development process, financial hurdles posed significant challenges for Lavrida. The V6's development costs were overwhelming, depleting the company's financial resources, already under strain from Japanese manufacturers dominating the superbike market with more affordable and competitive models. Moreover, new racing regulations banning motorcycles with more than four cylinders further diminished the commercial prospects of the V6. While innovative, the project ultimately became a financial burden for the company. Lavrida struggled to secure additional funding as sales of their other models also declined. The high production costs made mass producing the V6 unfeasible and the project was eventually abandoned marking a pivotal moment in the decline of Moto Lavrida. With the V6 project stalled and racing regulations limiting engine configurations, Lavrida shifted its focus back to 1,000cc triple-cylinder motorcycles. However, this decision had far-reaching implications for the company's ecosystem. While reliable and robust, Lavrida's triple-cylinder engines began to fall behind their Japanese competitors. Brands like Honda and Kawasaki swiftly captured the market with their lighter, more powerful, and technologically advanced four-cylinder motorcycles. For instance, Honda's CB750, introduced in 1969, offered the perfect combination of high performance, reliability, and affordability, revolutionizing the global motorcycle industry. In contrast, Lavrida motorcycles, crafted in Braganze, were often significantly more expensive due to their high-quality materials, and traditional production methods. Though known for their durability, Lavrida bikes were also heavy and less agile compared to Japanese offerings. High production costs made it difficult for Lavrida to compete on price, particularly in the American and European markets, which increasingly favored the value-packed Japanese models. This technological and pricing gap gradually eroded Moto Lavrida's market share pushing the company further into decline as Japanese manufacturers continued delivering unmatched consumer value. The year 1985 marked a turning point for Massimo Laverda, as well as for the family. Unable to sustain the company they had built, with dedication and passion, the Laverda family stepped away. Moto Laverda faced severe financial difficulties, overwhelmed by competition from innovative and affordable Japanese motorcycles. Ultimately, the company entered receivership to manage its financial crisis. By 1991, Moto Lavrida was acquired by Gruppo Zanini, a venture firm determined to revive the brand. Among their ambitious plans was the reintroduction of the legendary Lavrida V6 engine with innovative refinements. Yet, this dream never materialized. The 1991 model was cobbled together using leftover parts from Lavrida's factory stock. It existed more as a showroom piece, only appearing in promotional materials and brochures, never actually running. Long story short, after undergoing several ownership changes, Moto Lavrida was finally acquired by the Piaggio Group in 2004 as part of their acquisition of Aprilia. However, instead of reviving the Lavrida brand, Piaggio decided to shut down the Lavrida factory in Braganze 
and cease all production activities related to the brand. This marked the end of Moto Laverda's storied journey as an iconic motorcycle manufacturer. Piaggio expressed a willingness to sell the rights to the Laverda name if any investor showed interest. But to this day, the brand remains inactive. The legendary Lavrov 6 prototype is still preserved with great care at the Lavrida Museum, which was previously run by Cordes, a passionate collector and devoted Lavrida enthusiast. Cordes, who had a deep and enduring connection to the Lavrida legacy, sadly passed away in 2019 in the Netherlands. Over the years, the V6 prototype has been meticulously restored and now stands as one of the main highlights of the museum. This remarkable motorcycle is often showcased at classic motorcycle events across Europe, giving enthusiasts the chance to witness the beauty and uniqueness of the V6 engine that once symbolized Moto Laverda's ambitious spirit. 